Welcome to this short beginner's guide for how to get started with Sapiens. In the next few minutes, I want to show you some of the powerful tools that Sapiens can offer to supercharge your research and discovery process. When you first log in, this is the screen that you'll be greeted with. There's nothing here because we haven't searched for anything, but we'll change that soon. At the top, you'll notice that there's a search box and a menu for advanced settings. You also have the ability to upload a graph that you may have already downloaded before or been given from a collaborator. I'll explain both of these last two features later. But for now, since I come from a cancer research background, why don't we start off our discovery session by looking for information about EGFR. This is a common protein that's involved in a multitude of different cancers. One of the things you'll notice is that Sapiens represents knowledge in a different way to many other traditional search engines. Instead of focusing on specific web pages or documents or databases, we've taken the effort to collect information and data from multiple different silos, whether it's a genetic database, a protein database, or primary literature articles, and we've connected the knowledge into a semantic web. That means that the nodes here represent biological concepts and ideas. The edges represent specific semantic or real biological relationships extracted from this evidence. By representing all of this knowledge and information in this format, we've created something that's extremely tactile and malleable, and we have many ways to customize it. Many features are planned, as well as some that are already implemented, but we can get to that later. Now why don't we take a look at the major node types within our graph. First, we have protein data represented by this brown ribbon, but we also have nodes representing drugs, as well as genetic information, double helix within the orange circle. Literature information is represented by the book within the blue circle. As a note, this literature information is only available to certain customers. For more details, please check our website or reach out to us by email. Now let's take a closer look at protein nodes. When you click on the node, you'll see that there is a series of relationships extracted from open source protein-protein interaction databases. Within the basic information, we have things such as the annotation, a brief description of what the protein is, and links out to external databases that are commonly used by biomedical scientists around the world. Oftentimes, these external databases have a significant trove of information as well as significant publications that might be of interest to you. Now what about gene and drug nodes? Again, if you click on a gene node, you'll see that we have links out to external databases that have a wealth of information. For example, for EGFR here, we can see everything from publications to other orthologs and sequence level information. In addition, you have nodes dedicated to drugs and medications. They contain significant information and identification and we are also planning on using these as connections to additional data sources that we are adding in the future. Now let's take a look at literature nodes. If I click on a specific literature node, I'll see a detail window that gives a summary of the semantic relationships associated with that node for your specific graph. If I click on a literature box, you come to the basic building block of our semantic knowledge web. This literature detail box has a few key pieces of information. We have the specific sentence from which the knowledge relationship was extracted, and we also have the broader context around that sentence. But most importantly, if you're interested in this specific paper, you can click on the link and immediately be directed to the original source. If your institution already has a subscription to this journal, then you can immediately read the article as well. Sapiens slots right in to many of the existing resources you might already have simply making it much more efficient to access the information and knowledge that you're really interested in. Now let's go back to the summary page for this node. Because each of these semantic relationships has a publication associated with it, we're actually providing you with a curated bibliography specific to this and other subjects that you're interested in. But what if you don't see the topic that you're interested in? What do you do now? Well, the great thing about Sapiens is that you can always add more search terms and increase the depth and richness of the results. Unlike many other databases and search tools out there, we don't force you to only look at genes or only look at drugs. And in fact, we'll soon be moving towards natural language search as well. 
So why don't I start looking up trastuzumab? It's one of the most common breast cancer drugs on the market, and I'm interested to see what kind of research has been done connecting it to EGFR. Well, here are the results. The first thing you'll notice is that we have significantly more information, which is what we would have hoped for since we're looking for both trastuzumab and EGFR now. Let me just move these literature nodes out of the way. Like I said, you have the ability to click and drag, and this is a very tangible, tactile experience. You're still operating at the level of ideas as opposed to just papers or database entries, though. Let's take a look at the drug and gene network. We see that in addition to EGFR, we have additional genes that have been indicated. And if you look at the connections, you see that this is a set of genes that have multiple drugs as intermediaries. This is really important to a lot of our drug discovery customers because very rarely are your medications given in isolation. So if you want to figure out what other potential genetic effects are happening from the pharmacodynamics, this is a good place to start. For example, tamoxifen is another very common breast cancer drug. Now why don't we take a look at the trastuzumab literature node in a little bit more detail. As you browse the different semantic links in this node, what you'll see is that we actually have quite a diversity of research studies included in our knowledge graph. You have everything from human subjects research to in vitro studies to mouse models and other types of experimentation. In fact, soon we will be directly adding clinical trial information to our graph as well. Now here, for example, I might see different genes of interest when I'm trying to study the impact of trastuzumab on EGFR. There really is a wealth of information, and as you search and query, I really encourage you to take a look at the different semantic insights. I guarantee that you'll find information and connections that you didn't know about before. And if something isn't covered to the level of detail that you would like, feel free to shoot us an email. In fact, we're in the process of rolling out automated methods to automatically add more information and conduct further research in the literature for topics that users are interested in but which might not be covered to the level of detail that they're satisfied with. Sapiens is a dynamic, growing web, and you can have confidence that it will always show the most up-to-date, cutting-edge information. Now let's go back to the beginning, because I want to show some of the more advanced features that Sapiens can offer. The first thing you'll notice in the Advanced Search Options menu is a slider for maximum neighbors per node. This is just one variable in our larger algorithm for determining what types of results to show you. And in fact, we'll probably be replacing it soon with a different and more refined metric. However, right now you can use the slider to control the depth and breadth of the results. Why don't we start by putting it all the way down at the minimum of 10 and redo our original search. The main thing you notice here is that there are significantly fewer search results. This is because by limiting the amount of results to be shown, Sapiens is prioritizing just the few nodes that have the highest degree of connectivity. If you want to see much more though, you can just move the slider to the other extreme and redo the search. Now let's look at other search features. Previously, when we wanted to add search terms, we would add them directly to the search bar. However, you can also hold down Control and double-click on a node to expand it. The blue pulsing reflects the fact that we're now running an expanded search. Information related to ERBB2 is being looked up in our larger knowledge graph. These results find additional nodes that are connected to the other topics and subjects that you're interested in in your existing graph. It's reflected not only in the literature, but also in primary data such as molecular data as well. I realize that search results can seem pretty complex pretty quickly. One way of making sense of all this is by looking at the search feed window in the right pane. When you open this up, it will have a more traditional flat view of the search results. You'll see scientific literature terms represented by their frequency. This can allow you to quickly identify the information that you're most interested in. In the very near future, 
This right window pane will also be used to give more information about data types we are currently in the process of adding. For example, you'll be able to click on a literature edge and see any grants, patents, or clinical trials related to that study. But we're planning on doing even more. Natural language-based filtering and generative AI are already in the works to help narrow down topics, explain relationships, and even write evidence-based summaries of your personal knowledge graph. We have some ambitious ideas about how Sapiens can continue to evolve as a powerful discovery engine. For example, if you'd like to see specific information represented graphically, let's say I want to find information related to lung disease, you can use the search within bar and that will give a much more strict text-based matching. It will highlight those edges and nodes which are most relevant and contain that information. If you find information or ideas or comments that you want to save, you can tag them by clicking on this icon. Tagging is another great way for you to personalize your knowledge graph, and these tags are stored securely so when you log in next time, they can be recovered and you can see them again. By clicking on the tagging icon, you'll be able to see nodes that have tags outlined in green. For example, here, for erlotinib, I can see that I had previously had it tagged. These tags are saved on our cloud platform, and you can then see them at a later time so you don't have to try to reconstruct the ideas and topics that you were most interested in when you were searching before. We also have additional tools for you to personalize the knowledge graph to the information that you want most. If I'm no longer interested in a node, I can simply click on that node and then click on the trash can at the top and it will hide that for me. Once you do so, you'll soon see that the scientific literature terms in the side pane have been updated to reflect the new graph. We're also in the process of adding more node management and filtering features as well. Finally, I want to talk about our upload and download sharing features. You can download the graph as a JSON file and send it to collaborators, you can receive it from collaborators and re-upload it. When you do so, it will reconstruct the specific graph that you were looking at previously. And as I mentioned before, your tags will still be there. This means that months down the line, after you've done your experiments, if you want to come back and look at your original literature search, perhaps when you need to write the paper or write the grant, you'll be able to recover that specific knowledge graph with those sources. And they'll also be updated with any additional information that's been added in the meantime. Now this has just been a small snapshot of all the different tools that Sapiens can offer. We are constantly adding more, and the best way to keep notified is by signing up for our newsletter. In the meantime, I hope you try it out and explore what new insights Sapiens can provide for you. We value your feedback as professional scientists at the cutting edge of medicine and technology, so feel free to reach out via email or the other links in the video description below. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you have a great time spending less time on search and more on discovery.